Now, um, as we have seen what an infinite series is and what the sum of an infinite series is, let us look at some particular examples of infinite series. And the, the first of them is going to be the geometric series. So very, very useful in practice and kind of re relatively easy to handle. And um, well, here it is. So first, what is a geometric sequence? So a geometric sequence is a sequence uh, where every next term is obtained from the previous term with multiplying by a number. So and this number is called the common ratio. Well, and the corresponding infinite series, well, uh, there is, sorry, I've just realized that there is a typo error here. It should be, of course, plus dot, 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 because this is the infinite sum. Uh, it's called a geometric series. Okay, so let us look at some examples. So here is a geometric series because um, every next term is obtained from the previous term multiplying with one half, right? So the first term here is one half and it is our A. And the common ratio is what you multiply by every next term is, is obtained from the previous term multiplying by one half, right? So next term, next element is one half times the previous element. So this one half is called the common ratio. So here is another example. Uh, the common ratio could be negative two, right? So if um, to here uh, every next term changes this design, and also uh, you 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 see here powers of three, right? So the first term is is one. So this is our a, and the common ratio is negative one third. So here is yet another series. So here, the first term is four. And the common ratio is every next term is obtained from the previous term with multiplying by three. So the common ratio is three. Well, and uh, just the, this strange series one minus one plus one and so on is also a geometric series. And here the uh, first term is one and the common ratio is negative one. Okay, so all these are examples of geometric series. Uh, and here is a very, very important uh, theorem about geometric series. So if you know the uh, first term and the common ratio, then you can figure out whether your geometric series converges and what its limit, what the, the, the sum is, right? So if the absolute value of the common ratio is less than one, uh, then it converges. Well, so notice that here um, a is not zero, but in fact, um, if this holds, then the, this formula is also true if a is zero. So you, you can forget about this, right? So because, you know, if a is zero, then what you get is just zero plus zero plus zero and so on. And the right hand side is just just, just zero. Right? So if a were equal to zero, then you would just have the, the series all whose elements are, are zeros, and the formula would work, right? So if the absolute value of the common ratio is less than one, then the series converges, and the sum of the series is the first term divided by one minus the common ratio, right? And if a is not zero, if the first term is not zero. Uh, and the absolute value of the common ratio is bigger than or equal to one, then the series diverges. It kind of makes sense, right? Because if uh, if this is true, then it means that every time uh, with every next element of the series is obtained from the previous by multiplying with a number that is bigger than one. So the, these numbers grow bigger and bigger. And of course, if you add them together, um, the, the sum becomes even bigger. So, you know, it, the, the whole thing just grows to infinity. So, which is why uh, it's kind of easy to, to see that. Now, if uh, the common ratio is smaller than one, then every next term, you know, becomes just smaller and smaller. So, um, and it kind of makes sense that if you take the sum of um, numbers that become smaller and smaller, then you may get up 
uh, you, you may end up with something that is finite. And it actually happens here now. So let me let me uh, let me um, um, let me do the proof. So I mean, of course, you, you can just memorize the, the answer, but so here the, the proof is kind of neat and um, relatively relatively simple. Okay, uh, so in, in in this case, so we know that a n is uh, a times r to the n. So notice, by the way, I, I probably should have emphasized it. Uh, it, it was on the slides, but I, I didn't really um, say it out loud. So uh, with geometric series, it is kind of convenient to assume that n begins from, from 0, not, not from 1. All right, uh, so here is a n. Now, what is s n? So s n is, is the, the sum of these from 1 to n. So it is a uh, times 1 plus r plus r square plus r cube plus and so on plus r to the n All right so this is sn now how can we sort of simplify this so it it, it seems like a growing well the, the sum of the growing number of of terms now there are two slightly different methods to do it so one on, on the printed slides you, you, you can read it. So there is another one that I I will share to you. So what, what I usually do, I, I know that this amazing formula uh, that, that looks like this. So let me uh, use a different different color to show you, to share the formula with you. So the, the formula looks like this. So um, one minus R to some power. Well, um, let, let me use K. So K is really one minus r times 1 plus r plus r square plus and so on plus r to the k minus 1. This is the generalization of the formula that you're probably familiar with, like um, the difference of squares and the difference of cubes. So you you, you can, in, in the same way, you, you can introduce the formula for the difference of any any powers, right? And you, you can kind of easily verify it. I mean, if if you know is this true or not so how can you verify it right so you you have um what does it equal to so this is actually so it is one times all this and this is going to be one plus r plus r square plus and so on plus r to the k minus one minus r times the whole thing right so r times one so minus r minus r times r minus r square minus and so on so minus r times r to the k minus 2 is going to be r to the k minus uh, 1 and minus r to the k. And now you see that this everything cancels out and the remaining thing is just 1 minus r to the k. So the, the, this, this formula is correct, right? Okay, so um, but now looking at our Sn, what we see here is really this almost this, this formula. Um, but I will have to change it a little bit. So I will have, uh, th th this formula is true for any value of k. So in particular, it's true when um, k is n plus one, right? So I know that one minus r to the n plus one equals one minus r times one plus r plus r square plus and so on plus r to the k. Now, and this is, Kind of oh so, sorry uh, it should be of course the plus r to the n and th th this is what what we really need right so the, the only thing is that we probably should take this and move to the left hand side right so um, one minus r to the n plus one divided by one minus r is is really this thing all right so let me continue um, with my sn so now my sn is going to be a times according to the formula that i just derived one minus r to the n plus one divided by one minus r all right and now i need to take the limit of the, this expression as n goes to infinity right so what happens because the, the sum of the infinite series is the uh, limit of its partial sums. So what happens if I take the limit of this as n goes to infinity? 
Well, um, the, the thing about it is that if um, absolute value of R is less than one, then R to the N plus one, it, its limit is, is zero. Uh, we, we, we just saw it in, in the previous lecture. So the limit of consecutive powers of some number that is smaller than one is just, just zero. Right? Now, what happens if absolute value of R is bigger than one? In that case, R to the N plus one really just, just goes to infinity. And the remaining um, case is when absolute value of R is precisely one. So which means that either R is one or R is negative one. Okay, so if R is one, then our formula doesn't really work because th there is a division by one minus R. So if, if R is one, but if R is one, then all the elements of our series are just, just one, right? So then in, in that case, so SN is just A times one plus one plus and so on. And this is, well, N plus one because the summation starts from, from zero. And of course, the, the, this just goes to infinity. Well, if R is negative one, then what we, what we get is the sum of A times minus one to the N. And we already know that the, this, the, this sum is taken from zero to infinity. We already know that it diverges, right? Now, in this case, partial sums of our infinite series approach uh, infinity and the series diverges. So the remaining case is when absolute value of R is less than one. And in this case, this approaches zero. And what we get in the end is just A times one minus zero divided by one minus R, which is A over one minus R, which is precisely what we wanted to, to derive. All right, so th this is basically the proof of, uh, of this, this result. So now that there is kind of a slightly different version to do it, uh, to approach to do it, uh, that, that you can read if you want, you can, you can use the, this, the, this approach instead, it, it's up to you. So the important thing is that you kind of need to, to remember the end result, right? So uh, that if the common ratio um, is, the absolute value of the common ratio is smaller than one, then the series converges. And the sum of the series can be found according to this equation. Is the first term divided by one minus the common ratio. Right, uh, so if our geometric series does not start with, uh, with term zero, then we still have, you know, the first term. So the formula is still works, right? So the sum of the infinite series is the first term divided by one minus the common ratio. Okay, and this is something that you, you can just devote to memory. Or if you forgot it, then you can always use the, this neat trick to uh, to derive the, this answer. All right, so here are a few examples. So um, if the first term is one and the common ratio is negative one third, then the sum of this, this series is going to be uh, one, the first term divided by one minus the common ratio, which is negative one third. So this is one divided by one plus one third, which is three quarter, right? So one over four thirds is three quarter, yeah. And that's our answer. So here is another example. So here notice that the sum begins with two. So the first term of our series is really the term with n equals two. So the first term here is the term when n equals two. So this two to the power, uh, two plus one is three divided by five to the power zero, which is eight. So the formula is still valid. So it is going to be the first term, eight divided by one minus the common ratio and the common ratio is two over five. So this is uh, eight divided by um, three over five, which is eight times five over three, which is 40 over three. All right, um, and 
that's the end uh, of the second part.